ավարելի մեծ բրիտանիա երկուսուսային եվ վանջայի միացանցակավորության անդակար եվ միազրդեց պատսիրտվի։ Կեպին լիջի, լրադրողների հետ այս որվահ մանիպման արիկը եկի լիջի հետ սանք է բարաջ մեծ բրիտանիայում դերնի մեծանց վերջին միջազգային հանության համար։ Հոսկ վերաբեր մեր նատո իլակատոր ժորումի որտեղորը ծավարսում և շոտլանձայի հարակվեին։ Սկսենք ենց շոտլանձայի հարակվեին։ Արդյուկ կարող
but it was also clear that the vote on Friday was not a vote for the status quo. Scotland has voted for a stronger Scottish Parliament, backed by the strength and security of the United Kingdom. The three pro-union parties, the Conservatives, the Liberal Democrats and the Labour Party, have made commitments to devolve further powers to the Scottish Government on tax, spending and welfare. So, as our Prime Minister said, it's it's right uh, that we uh, look at a new and fair settlement for Scotland, but this should also be accompanied by a new and fair settlement for the other countries of the United Kingdom, England, Wales and Northern Ireland. And there will now be a very intensive period of, um, of work to develop these proposals. Finally, the Prime Minister noted that the referendum campaign was very hard fought, it stirred very strong passions. Record numbers registered to vote and record numbers cast their vote. We can be really proud of, of that fact and, and the way that the Scottish people took up the challenge and debated um, uh, this very important question. Our task now is to look forward, to bring people together and to look at how to best build the future of the United Kingdom together. Those are my opening remarks. Um, I'm happy to take questions. Do you want to remind me of your question? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Do you think you answered your question with this? Settle the question for the, for the generation to come. <laughs> 
In some cases, the issue may seem clear and easy to resolve. In others, particularly where there are different ethnic or religious groupings, it may be extremely complex. And the example I always give is one from our own experience, which is the different way that, that um, we have handled uh, these questions in relation to Scotland and Northern Ireland. We were able to have a referendum in Scotland because we knew that, that all, all sides were willing to peacefully accept the result of the referendum, whatever the results would be. But at the moment there, there isn't a question of a, of a referendum for Northern Ireland. The Good Friday Agreement, which uh, was the peace deal um, agreed in 1998, uh, said that if it becomes clear that the majority of people in Northern Ireland wish to change the status of Northern Ireland, then the UK government will also support that wish. But at the moment, the two communities of Northern Ireland have very different ideas about what they want that future status to be. All sides understand that a long process of reconciliation and peace building will be necessary before all sides are willing to accept whatever the outcome of a referendum would be. So, uh, as I said, I think every, every situation needs to be, to be looked at um, on its own merits. I think I've answered that question. Yes, Carson, yes, I've talked to him, so I've got this one. 
I think an I.O. I think I've answered the question, and the question is that every case is different. But the key issue is that there has to be, if you want a peaceful resolution to a conflict, there has to be a political a political resolution of the, of, of the competing, of the different principles of territorial integrity and self-determination. But I guess um, what the Scottish referendum showed was that uh, the, the legal framework uh, we believe strongly has to has to rest on on a basis of of um, common consent, political consent. So changes um, must, uh, I think, uh, be accompanied by a, a very substantive debate within society, and it must be very clear that that there is a. Uh, a clear, um, there is clear support for, for any changes that, that will be made. But I assume that, that this is this is what will happen um, with with the process of uh, looking at constitutional changes in Armenia, that there will be a, a public debate. Yes, I think uh, 
um, NATO, NATO's ambition is to support uh, the, the defence reform um, and the, the democratic development of those countries that, that feel that it's helpful to, to have a relationship with NATO. Uh, that's the first pillar of its partnerships policy. And the second pillar is to encourage partners to become involved with these wider questions of international security as Armenia has uh, contributed so successfully to uh, to KFOR and to ISAF over the last 10 years. But the, the partnership relationship is, is really governed primarily by the partner, what the partner wants. NATO can offer things, but it's it's the, the free choice of the partner what to decide what's in their, in their interests. And, and in this context, I think Armenia is a, a really great example of a country which has a, a clear secure, strategic security relationship with the CSTO and with Russia in particular. But which nevertheless is cooperating very successfully with, with NATO and, and which is continuing to, to find very productive ways to, to promote defence reform and but also uh, the preparedness of the peacekeeping forces for international relations. I think that's a question for the embassy of the Russian Federation. Um, all I doubt is that there is actually an OSCE arms embargo, uh, which the, the UK and its partners respect. Extremely 
difficult, challenging for all the parties concerned, but um, it's vital. Um, and, and so I think uh, my the call to Azerbaijan is the same as the call to Armenia. All, all the, the um, those who wish for peace and stability in the South Caucasus urge both presidents to to come to the negotiation table in good faith and to uh, to uh, start a process which I'm sure the, the, the people of, of both sides of the conflict um, very much want. And I think I mean, the other point I'd add is that I think uh, the point that is made sometimes about the, the importance of preparing populations for peace, this is a, this is a very important point. And that involves talking about some of the painful compromises for both sides which will be necessary in order to, to reach a peace. Thank you. 
If you want to provide me with more information. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just want to, to preview some of the things we'll be, we'll be doing in the audience, and if any of you are interested in, in following up and finding out more, um, let me know. And uh, in particular, we want to promote some of the things that we think are great about uh, Great Britain. And particularly in education, in culture, and in business. So, in education, uh, we have expanded our Chiefling Scholarship Program this year and we have a partnership with the Lewis Foundation to cover all costs for master's courses in <laughs> We have more scholarships, so please help us find, find more applicants, young people who want to make a difference. Tomorrow, uh, a new education collaboration will open in Yerevan, and that's the British School of Business. Um, this is a partnership between Anglia Ruskin University and the Economics University And it will be the first time that British degrees will be offered in Armenia. And in October, as you probably know, the Dilajan School will open. And this is a new school in the United World Colleges Group. Uh, and this is a, a, an educational organisation which started in Wales, in Cardiff. Pioneering a new form of, of international education, bringing children from, from many, many countries from all around the world together. So that's education on culture. Uh, last week, I uh, hope you all saw the groundbreaking uh, concert with the British DJ Mr. Switch and the Yerevan State Youth Orchestra. And we also invited the British author Meg Rossoff to take part in the Literary Arc Festival. At High Fest at the beginning of October, we'll have another unique collaboration. And this is the performance of the Unlimited Dance Company, including dancers with disabilities. Mm High -hmm. Fest will also feature another British performance, a one-man show of the global short story Diary of a Madman. We'll also be screening a film of the brilliant Sindhuk Young theatre production of Shakespeare's King John, which they performed at the Globe Festival in 2012. 
And we'll also be taking part in the Re Animania Animation Festival at the end of October. Finally, on business, we want to do everything we can as to, to promote British business, British brands in Armenia, of which there are many. Uh, we'll make some further announcements near the time, but in the meantime, I'm, I'm really pleased that one of the products I can continue to promote this autumn is Scotch whiskey. And uh, finally, this year, as you all know, is a, is a year where we're uh, commemorating the centenary of the beginning of the First World War. We will have a, a number of events to, to commemorate this anniversary um, with our European colleagues, particularly our, um, with the German embassy and the French embassy. And, and I think for me the key thing is the way that after fighting two devastating wars uh, in the last 100 years, the European project to develop trust, prosperity, security has, has been an extraordinarily successful one, and that's something we want to celebrate. Um, and if you're interested in, in finding out more, then please get in touch with us and we'll, we'll let you know as we as we announce our events. Well, it's another very tragic example of um, the, the violence and destruction that we're currently seeing um, across across the world. And of course, a, a particular concern is is that um, the, these very ancient Christian communities in, in the Middle East, this uh, what I've called before this mosaic of, of of religions and of peoples, is at great risk from the advances of Islamic State. We're very aware of how fragile the situation is for, for many of these communities, populations. And um, the international community uh, uh, grouping of around 40 nations is working very hard at the moment to develop a common strategy to find a way of, of uh, dealing with this terrible threat. Thank you.